And joining us now, medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton. It's heartbreaking, and, and the scariest part is this is frighteningly common. This actually even happened in your family. Right. How, I mean, how do we prevent these mistakes? Well, sometimes, Erica, there's just not much that a patient and their family can do. In this particular case, what, in the piece we just heard about, in a neonatal ICU, we're talking about often very premature babies, very small, very fragile, very sick newborns. Errors in that setting are eight times more likely to occur than they are to occur in adult settings. Again, some of them may be equipment or mechanical errors. Some of them, as it was in this case, might be human errors. Strategies are being put in place, as we've heard, to try and reduce or minimize that. But you know, you, you just have to hope for the best and be active and involved when, you, when someone in your family is in that setting. So that's one of the most important things you can do because right. you have to do what you can on your end. So before I even set foot in the hospital, if possible, what do I need to be thinking about? What should I do? You want to do your research, first of all. You want to find out about the hospital. You want to talk to your doctor, if possible, if it's an elective or scheduled situation, and ask as many questions as possible. And if you're talking about being admitted to a hospital, it's always a good idea to bring a friend or relative with you and have someone there at all times who's not as emotionally vested in what's going on but can really pay attention, can hear what's being said to you as it's being explained mm -hmm. and, and be able to repeat that back to you if necessary. And, and once you are in the hospital, there are important questions you should ask or bring someone with you who's able to ask those questions, I guess. Exactly. And again, the key here is to be active, to be involved, to be an advocate. A lot of people are embarrassed or ashamed and they don't want to speak up, they don't want to cause trouble. That's actually the opposite of what a patient or their family should do. So there are a couple of key tips. Number one, you always want to check that anyone touching you or your relative has clean hands. Doctors and nurses should actually wash their hands or use hand sanitizers in front of you before coming to the patient's bedside. You want to confirm the procedure, ask why it's being done, what body part is being tested, ask as many questions about that procedure as possible. You want to review all allergies, all medications repeatedly. You cannot overemphasize that type of information. And lastly, it's always a good idea to ask for written information. I write down all specific drugs, tests, procedures, the names and the doses on a piece of paper and give it to my patients because, again, this is common information and language for me, not so common for the patient. And that can be important, too, when you head home, things like a written instruction, because you want to make sure that you also continue that care when you leave. Absolutely. Follow-up is critical, Erica, and a lot of mistakes actually occur after you leave the hospital or the doctor's office. So if someone says, we'll let you know if the results are abnormal, not sufficient, you want to follow up, make sure you get the copy of that result mm -hmm. and the test results, if possible, in printed form. Some great information this morning. Jen, thanks. You bet.